Hey all here OS Reviews, recently we did a revisited look at the Motorola Razr along with other foldables such as the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip and this definitely seems like the future in terms of a device that can be small when you need it to be when you're traveling but also unfold to get you just a much larger canvas to work with and the entire thing of course is just one continuous display. Today we'll be taking a look at a, another take on that idea and it's going to be the LG dual screen case accessory. The one we have here is for the LG G8X smartphone, but you can also find it in variants available for the LG Velvet, the LG V60, among some of the other last LG phones that they had made. So as the name implies, this is basically a phone case that you're able to attach and use like any other case, kind of in a folio style, but it also combines and adds a secondary OLED display onto the phone. So you're able to now multitask and have two screens, but at least my perception going in was that it's just not going to be a very good experience because of that gap in the middle, meaning that it's just not quite as continuous uh, of a user interface. It's something, in fact, that we have seen in previous forms, like the Curacera Echo from the late 2010s, one of the first phones that played around with this idea, and as hard as they tried back in the day, there was still that kind of gap in the middle. And in more modern times, of course, we also have variants of this design made by companies like ZTE, the Axon M, as well as the current Surface Duo is still doing that same thing. So because I already had some experience on those earlier products, I didn't feel like this was something too fresh that I absolutely had to cover at the time when we did a review on the LG G8X a few months back. One of the other reasons being cost. So this dual screen case accessory, originally you can find for about a hundred bucks when it was new, when you purchased it with the phone. Although the phone's cost has come down drastically, the case's price has remained at a similar level and I just didn't think it was too worthwhile at the time. So paying that much for the case when the phone could be bought for not that much more wasn't something I was able to really justify. But recently when shopping around, I managed to find one for a little under 50 bucks and I thought, okay, it might be worth just taking a final look at. How does a form factor like this, which is more current with more powerful specs, compare with something like that? Since this was obviously going to be a much faster phone than, say, the Curacera Echo from a decade ago. And I have to admit, after using this case, that it's really fun and provides more value and I like it much more than I was expecting. So it really is something that's very cool, especially if you have a phone that is compatible. With that being said, there definitely are still plenty of quirks from a software perspective that we will touch on in this video. So anyways, taking a closer look at the case first, it is constructed out of this polycarbonate rubberized texture, which makes it feel pretty grippy when you're holding it, almost like a synthetic leather. The back has a pretty large window, which allows you to see not only the camera sensor, but I think LG did this on purpose so that the logo of G8X would also shine through. A little bit silly, but you have this on the back. And then the entire hinge here is 360 degrees. You can also use it as a kickstand and also further fold it back. It's like a Lenovo yoga book, one of those convertibles until you completely fold it like this where you have two screens on other side. So it holds the weight quite well despite any angle you may want to set it at. And there are magnets here that will lock things into place. Now on the left hand spine, you also find access to the buttons here, including for volume and also the assistant key. And what's interesting here is because the case is pretty thick to accommodate that hinge on the side, these are actual buttons and it's passing that signal using the USB type C port the bottom here features uh, kind of a proprietary magnetic charging adapter and that is because since it needs to power that secondary display it's occupying the type c port of the phone when you're inserting it into the case so you have to use another port here for charging uh, so they give you that accessory in the box however you can also use qi wireless charging and that still works even with the case on so you have at least two ways to charge your device still with this case as a result of occupying some space for the type c to play plug in, it's a little bit thicker at the bottom and that's why it's going to be a bit more recessed as far as the headphone jack and the speaker grill here are concerned. And then on the inside we have of course that 6.3 inch display which is exactly the same as the original phone's display, even includes that teardrop notch which they claim is there just to provide symmetry. There's also a cutout so it allows the earpiece to still pass through when you're, it's sitting in the case. So you can make calls even with it folded shut which is pretty neat. Now on the 
other side here, we have just that Type-C port. The process of snapping the phone into place is quite easy. Again, it's just plugging into that Type-C port and then you just apply a little bit of pressure. Overall, it's similar to holding something like a book, but the side with the phone in it is going to be more bulky than the other end with just a display. So keep that in mind. It's a little bit more centered on the right side, uh, but you're able to switch screens and kind of customize the orientation and layout as you would prefer. We can see that there is a external display at the front here, but it is relatively simple. It will tell you the time, basic notifications like weather and text messages, as well as the battery percentage and date, but that is pretty much it. It's not a touchscreen, unlike on the displays on the Z Flip or the, say, Motorola Razr, so you're not really able to customize this with other widgets, albeit this entire surface, as you can see, is like a mirror. It's made out of a plastic material, so it's not quite as solid as glass, but still attracts a ton of fingerprints and smudges. For sure, it's going to be adding more thickness to the phone as a result, but it's not too bad, I suppose, for what it is. It's the fact that you're able to remove it when you don't need it and just snap it in when you want to use it is really clever. That modularity, I do appreciate. So overall, it's not bad. Similar to something like a Galaxy Z Fold, though, it will take up just a little more space uh, when you are carrying it around which isn't going to match the elegance of a true folding display, uh, especially if you are trying to watch content, for instance, that's stuck there in the middle. However, I have to say that playing around with it, there are still plenty of other use cases where it is perfectly serviceable, and one of those applications has to be with web browsing. So using the Whale browser that is made by LG, or you can also use Chrome, it has pretty good optimization where you're able to view, let's say, search results on the right side, and then double tap on the link, and it will open up on the other screen while you continue to search through other, let's say, articles or other sources as you're doing research. Alternatively, you can also do the full screen experience, which they call wide view, and that will push the same content over to both panels, just using it as an extended display. Again, in this mode, you do have that kind of unsightly gap in the middle until I have found in the kind of portrait orientation to actually be a lot more useful, especially as content is often split in a more reasonable fashion. You can kind of see sometimes though, as text is going up, it still tends to have that interesting split effect, but it's less noticeable here, especially as you're able to just see so much more content at a glance, and it really transforms it into kind of a pseudo tablet-like experience, again, similar to the Samsung Galaxy Fold, in that instance, just having something that is sizable like a phone but transforms into a tablet when you need it. And of course, the durability of something like this should also be stronger, at least on paper, because the display itself is not folding. It's just a conventional hinge like you would have on a regular laptop, for instance, and the stress on the display will definitely be less, uh, so it should last for technically longer if you're a little bit more rugged on your phones. Here's another example, especially if you're looking at desktop versions of pages, like on eBay here, I think it is showing off content in a pretty readable form. The keyboard experience of the second display is also great, because when you tap on any text input field, it will push the keyboard down onto the bottom portion, so it gives you a much larger canvas to type things out, acting just like a pseudo mini laptop that is sitting here on your desk. Now, media consumption when it comes to watching videos, though, is definitely an area where having this gap, or even if it's as slim as something like the Surface Duo, is still not going to be as good as a continuous folding screen. Uh, with that being said, if you are doing a little bit more of multitasking, that can still work. So for instance, here on the YouTube app, uh, if you are kind of uh, full screening the experience, it can play back on the top while you read back additional articles and research on the side, and that can still make sense. It isn't too disruptive. But again, if you are truly combining the screen like this, this is obviously not going to be the best experience, but again, you're able to push it into just one screen if you wanted to, and then do something else completely at the bottom. Rather, I would say, again, web browsing and reading are really the areas where something like this can shine. It supports the Kindle app, in fact, so you can have two pages split on two screens like a book. The other area where, again, it's kind of interesting here is the phone technically, by default, treats these as separate instances or kind of two separate phones almost where you're able to operate them completely independently of one another. However, that also brings an interesting point, uh, which is the f apps that you're able to really take advantage of that true full screen large view experience is limited, at least out of the box. Uh, you're only given a few choices where you're able to use what is called that wide view, and you can see the options here, including the browser, using the Gmail app, 
Maps, as well as YouTube, you can extend screen, but for everything else from third-party developers, content, you aren't able to stretch that one screen into both panels. However, I have been able to find kind of one alternative or workaround to that uh, in the form of the Play Store. There is going to be a app that you can download called wide mode for LG. And this is a free app which will then push a widget on the drag down notification shade that you can then access by a single click. And this will give you the ability to truly transform this into a widescreen experience across any app that you have on your device. So personally, I do really like this. And now it solves maybe one of the only complaints I had, which was that limited selection of titles, which supported this widescreen experience. Now, regardless of the app that you're trying to interact with, you can have this extended screen experience Again, it may not be perfect for every single application, but at least you have the ability to try it out, experiment, and see if you want to keep using it or not. Now, the other application where this dual screen view I have found to be really useful is in gaming, and perhaps this is actually the best scenario to use this dual screen case, arguably. Uh, so certain games that you will launch on here, you can bring up the LG gamepad. It will then open up here on the bottom screen, and all of a sudden you have access to kind of a pseudo gamepad that is very realistic, almost having like a Nintendo DS in the palm of your hands. If you don't like the way that the controls are laid out, in fact, you're able to even customize that just by tapping on the bottom icon there. This is a console style, but you can also go into a racing style and now it will look like this. Alternatively, there's also another kind of arcade style D-pad that you have as well at your disposal. And again, it reminds you of something like, for instance, the uh, Sony PlayStation phone, pretty responsive and surprisingly convincing as well. Now, the last mode that you have here is also a completely uh, kind of basic as well as custom mode where you're able to create your own D-pad by adding buttons as you will uh, freely. So let's try customizing the size of this button even and its position from where we are comfortable with our thumb. The quality of this secondary display is also quite good because it is exactly the same as the primary panel of the phone itself. It's a OLED display at Full HD or 1080p resolution. One thing that I will say though is the quality manufacturing may be um, a little bit subject to improvement. I say that because the adhesive that LG has used on this display is not the tightest, uh, especially I think it has to do with the magnets that they have used here. And as a result, it always wants to kind of push that screen further down onto the phone, and it tends to become a little bit more loose over time. Uh, luckily though, it really is just the adhesive, which means you can always, let's say, drop a bit of glue underneath there, and it would also just easily attach itself in, but it's also an area where maybe LG, as far as manufacturing goes, there's still a few places where they can always improve on. Now a few other notable remarks and quirks about this dual display is you have to keep in mind that the actual sensors and guts are powering the case from the phone. So that includes components like battery. Uh, so admittedly, if you are using this case because it's still using the phone's battery to drive this other component, it is going to fall faster. I got around, let's say, two hours less screen on time with the case attached versus using just the phone itself. On here, at least, you're still getting a few hours of usage, which feels like kind of a normal experience. The other quirk that's worth keeping in mind is the accelerometer is still in the main phone part. So if you are, say, flipping the orientation like this, you have to be a little bit more obvious with the phone piece here that you're doing that action. And that does mean that when you are using it in, say, the tent mode, it can be a little bit tricky. So case in point, I'll be doing something on this side, but if I flip it over, you can see how YouTube will be the wrong way up. So there should be, I think, a little bit of better optimization on that part. Now, if we take a closer look at some of those settings, I do want to also point out that additional things you can control include whether you want to pick an app that will automatically launch whenever the phone is flipped open. So let's go ahead and try that right now, in fact, and you'll see how the memo pad has automatically launched on the side. So that can work well if you're always using this, for instance, in a meeting environment. And other things that you can do here include changing the brightness of the screen to be different from the main panel or calibrate them to be in sync on the actual phone part is what looks like this small assisted touch panel. And that's how you control pretty much everything else that you do in terms of this dual screen. So if you tap here, you have the option to, let's say, turn off the dual screen when not in use, and that will also consume less power. It will just turn this completely blank. All right, so that is more or less it as far as our kind of hands-on closer look at the dual screen case accessory for LG smartphones, the G8X in this example. And I have to say that this is a lot more fun and practical than I was thinking uh, before I picked it up. I came in pretty skeptical, particularly because my experience with the Curiosity Echo wasn't 
particularly favorable, but I have to say that I think I was wrong in the sense that, first of all, if you manage to get one at a good enough price, it definitely makes the phone a lot more unique and fun. The fact that you can turn it off when not in use, it still acts as a pretty good case for the phone itself. And it also does have a few applications which are really useful, primarily because our phone displays have gotten so good and so large these days that uh, compared to, say, the Curiosity Echo from all those years ago, you are getting just a significantly larger canvas uh, that really does feel like you're using a tablet. The fact that you are able to just do so much more multitasking and still fold it down to something small. The fact that it's something completely removable. When you are done, you can just pop it out. I just really like that as well. And overall, again, if you have a phone that supports this, really why not, especially these days as the price has started to come down. You can check out more details if interested and our review on the G8X itself in the links down below for now that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews.